Yeah, be phenomenal or be for God. They fall like dominoes. So one of the most asked questions recently has been, I'm uploading videos to Instagram Reel and they're looking different than what I see inside Resolve. And today you're gonna get the answer to that specific problem. I'm gonna output five different versions. First, we're gonna look at them inside my Mac and see how each one looks. Then we're gonna upload them to Instagram and do an A-B test with Resolve. In terms of compression, and then also color accuracy. And I do want to take a second and welcome all our new FCM members. Make sure you join the Facebook group, introduce yourself, make friends. It is genuinely the best community when it comes to color grading. So super proud of it. Happy to have you guys in FCM. All right, guys, just remember, if you do want to deep dive, how do you shot match? How to always nail your skin tones? If you need practice footage, if you need some power grades and LUTs from me, then I have a free workshop that you can sign up for. Link is gonna be in the description, so definitely check it out. Obviously watch that after you finish this video. If you're enjoying the content, do me a favor. It helps out a lot. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesomeness, and let's roll the intro. All right, so now we're in Resolve and let me just kind of quickly take you through what I've done. I've gone ahead and created five different versions and obviously I'm gonna take you through and show you what's happening here. We're gonna figure out the best way to get the most accurate colors and least amount of compression when you upload to Instagram. Let me show you my first version that I exported. So the first version was basically right here. Just click on H.264 Master and just by doing that, I left everything as is. I didn't do anything else, and that's it. Then let's look at our second version right here. And all I did here is I left everything up top as is. I didn't mess with the overall bitrate or anything like that. I left it on automatic. But under advanced settings that you can pull down right here, I added manual tagging. So for color space, I chose Rec. 709 and then Gamma 2.4 because this is how it's supposed to be when you put something for Rec. 709 to be seen correctly. Most of the time this will be set to this will be set to timeline. Okay? So if I grab this and go all the way and just change it to same as timeline, well our timeline is set to DaVinci white gamut, intermediate. And if you didn't properly transform your image, then your final out is going to be going after this. So that's why you can always force it here and just set it to Rec 709 gamma 2.4 how I had it, but then let's just say if you forgot to do it there, this is just going to overwrite whatever is said there and just make sure that you get Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. So that was our second version, okay? And then our third version right here, all I did is this. I left the top as is, I didn't change anything. And then instead of my Gamma tag being Gamma 2.4, I changed it to sRGB because that is the Gamma tag for the web. And then we're gonna look at the results and we're gonna compare it to Gamma 2.4. Coming down to our version number four, here I just restricted the quality to 7,000 kilobits per second because if you give Instagram too big of a file, it's gonna take that, it's gonna recompress it. Their encoding processing is way worse than what you would do here inside Resolve. It's much more sophisticated. So I'm bottlenecking it on my end. So Instagram doesn't have to do anything else and it can just like bypass it and upload it. There is no white paper on it. So don't take my word for it, okay? Like for YouTube, we have white paper and it tells you what your file sizes should be if you don't want it to be re-encoded. So I came up with this number 7,000 kilobits per second, whereas the quality is not too low. And when you upload it to Instagram, the results are pretty good, but you be the judge of that. We'll look at it very soon. And then for the color space tag and gamma tag, I left it Rex of 9 and sRGB. And then the final version was actually H265. So I just clicked on this, the preset H265, and I left it as is. So even the gamma tags, I did not touch them. So no tagging, just click and print, okay? So now let's look at these versions right here. So the first version is what? Auto no tags. So it's like this, okay? And what is different about it? Well, it looks very different than what we have in Resolve because if I go here and we move to a similar frame, 
Let's do this. Let's move to a similar frame right here. Look at how different they are. How punchy this is to like how much room we have on the top and the bottom end. And same thing with this shot. So it is doing a gamma shift, right? If you don't do any tagging. Well, what happens when we do gamma 2.4? It's exactly the same result. So now I'm on no tagging, with tagging, same exact results, okay? Now watch what happens. When I go down to sRGB, all of a sudden, it changes. And now everything is how it's supposed to be. And if I go back and forth between the two, you can't tell the difference. So this is with sRGB, and then this is resolve screen. Exactly the same. So tagging the gamma to sRGB is great, even if you're showing somebody on your Mac, like if you are just kind of showing it to your client, hey, this is what the end result is going to look like. Because if you just don't throw a tag on it, or if you do gamma 2.4, it's going to look like that. And they're going to freak out. They're going to be like, it looks a lot darker than, you know, what you showed me here. And it does, right? So with sRGB, the problem is solved. So this is on auto setting. Here, the only difference is that we exported it with 7,000 kilobits per second instead of like unlimited or high quality, if you will. Okay, so I can see the difference a little bit. Just keep an eye in this area right here, and you're going to see a little bit more banding with 7,000 right here. It's not too much, and obviously, after YouTube's compression, you might not be able to see it 100%. Just make sure you're watching the video in 4K. Uh, and then finally, we have H.265. And again, it's doing the, because we didn't tag it, it's looking a lot darker. So like, look at the two, like just look at the sky between the two. Okay. Now, does it look better? Does it look worse? That's not the point. I kind of like the punchier look. Well, it's just not consistent and accurate to what this looks like. And our end goal as a colorist is always going to be we want to stay very, very true to what's happening here. Everything changes when you go to actually upload these to Instagram because check this out. So this one has no tag. This one has gamma 2.4. And if I swing between the two, look at that. There's absolutely zero difference. So once it goes up, it gets converted to sRGB no matter what. So like, look at that. Like here, there is no difference. So like sRGB looks exactly like gamma 2.4. Like, look at that. Okay. And so now, what do we have to look for when we upload it? Well, we have to look for banding. We have to look at the quality and the compression. And again, I would want you to just keep your eyes right here and look at that area. And what I noticed is that with 7,000, we get a little bit more activity here. We get a little bit more banding here, right here in this area. So I'm going to keep playing it so you guys can just really see it so we can drive the point home. And when I go to right here to full quality or auto, that banding goes away. And that was exactly the same on my phone. I literally had my phone an inch away from my eyes and I was looking at it for five minutes and I was going back and forth between them. And I just realized I was just like kind of latching on to different parts of the frame. And I concluded that H.264 with auto with tags on to sRGB is the best way to upload your reels to Instagram. And same rule will apply to TikTok or anything else for now. So once again, let's just revisit the winner is job number three right here. These are the settings, okay? So you're just going to start off by using H.264 here. You're gonna leave all this as is, auto, don't change anything, don't add anything to it. And then under your advanced settings, your color space tag is going to be Rec 709. Your gamma tag is going to be sRGB. Print it, and you're good to go. Yeah, be phenomenal or be for God. They fall like dominoes, soft as God. So the moral of the story is this. Don't necessarily overcomplicate things. If you found this helpful, then do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon so you could be notified when I put out brand new content. Also, do not forget to check out the free workshop. Link is going to be in the description. And on that note, if you have any content suggestions, drop it in the comment section below, and I will see you guys in the next video.